Not long ago, we released a review about the Oplus Duo, a budget-friendly tablet hybrid that boots both Android and Windows. That device was aimed for those people looking for a device that balances both of their work and school life and entertainment needs. However, the Duo is not the only product under Oplus's new category. It is accompanied with the Oplus Notepad. This product, unlike the Duo, is a more premium option for some. The device, despite seemingly a tablet, is more like an actual portable PC. Sporting some high-end characteristics, the Opus Notepad may be directed to those who are looking for a more serious machine. But with its steep price tag of 16,995 pesos, does the Opus Notepad really deliver? Or is it just an overpriced toy? Let's figure that out in our full review. The Oplus Notepad is a departure from the company's previous tablet and laptop hybrids. Both of the Oplus Duo and the Oplus Convertible didn't look awful themselves despite being made with plastic. But the one we have here right now just looks different, well in a good way of course. The Notepad has a more sleeker and elegant feel to it, which justifies the heft that you are paying to have it. But don't get me wrong. This is still plastic for the most part. What was I referring to is the solid build despite the materials used and some design touches. The device is surrounded with chamfered metal railings which may seem like no big deal but it actually gave a lot of extra points to the aesthetics department. This look is carried away to the buttons, the keyboard dock, and even around the camera lens. The actual tablet without the partnered keyboard dock has already a substantial weight to it which is a bit forgivable considering all the vast hardware that is inside and the fact that this is a 10-inch monster. The device is quite easy to carry around, although using this extensively with one hand can be tiring. The rear end of the device doesn't look too shabby either. The panel is kinda reminiscent to Samsung's Nexus 10 due to the lip at the top, which I believe serves as a network antenna. Not only that it gave the device the ability to receive 4G signals, but it just made it look good overall. However, I noticed that the backplate is prone to finger marks and smudges, which is not a big deal for me since it is not that flashy on first look. Taking a tour, we have the 10-inch IPS display on front, together with the 2-megapixel front-facing camera and the LED indicator for charging, which only lights up with no other color than blue. The lack of tint resulted to the light blinking when the device is recharging, then goes steady when it reaches 100%. The blinking effect is really irritating, in my opinion, especially when you're using the device while it is plugged in. The light going on and off is really distracting, since it is parallel to the actual display. The right side caters all your inputs, the 3.5mm headphone jack, ports for the micro HDMI, USB 2.0 for charging, USB 3.0, and the slots for the micro SD card and the micro SIM card. The USB 3.0, no doubt, is a big plus for as long as you actually have something to utilize it for. Probably the most essential input option, for me at least, is the micro HDMI. Considering the power and usability that you're getting on this thing, you probably want to hook it up also on a larger display and have it pretend like an actual desktop PC. The left side only has the two speaker drivers. The drivers feel like they are so tiny inside those grills, which makes the output also minute. The top has the lock and power switch and the volume controls. These buttons are made with metal. However, they aren't as tactile as what they should be probably because of their ultra-thin profile. Having a chunkier button wouldn't hurt and can actually make it more usable. At the bottom, we only have the contacts and magnets for the keyboard. And speaking of the included accessory, the dock itself also has the same design footprint with the actual notepad, from the weight and feel up to the chamfered metal look, which is present not only in its sides, but also to the borders of the touchpad. There's also a slick trim at the bottom of the device, which accentuates the USB ports on both sides of the keyboard. Talking about the ports, yup, the device can accommodate standard-sized USB inputs without the need of any USB OTG cable or adapters. You can plug in any thumb drives, accessories and peripherals 
or even smartphones and other devices. I tried plugging all of those and they all worked fine, except for one thing, my Transcend 1TB external hard drive. I tried looking for a fix but didn't had any luck. Thus, I ended up utilizing the OTG cable that comes with the device as an accessory and plugged it in on the USB port on the actual tablet. The notepad's keyboard utilizes a magnet hinge which makes it more functional rather than the implementation found on the Oplus Duo. The hinge makes it more effortless to fold the device when not in use. It also gives you the ability to adjust the position of the device to improve viewing angles. And while doing that, the keyboard itself does also lean forward for improved comfort when typing. Also, the tablet wobbles a little bit when you pull it forwards, but quite stiff when pushed backwards, which makes more sense when you have to utilize the touchscreen. The dock also has a chiclet style keys, just like everyone else. Quality-wise, the keys felt a little cheap, but still satisfying to press with good travel distance and quiet when being typed on. While the touchpad also shared the same sentiment, it is usable for sure, but it also felt like it was made with second-rate material. Since this is a more premium product, the Oplus Notepad sports a more high-end display. In contrast to the Oplus Duo, we have a 10-inch WXGA display which has a resolution of 1920 by 1200 and has a 226 pixels per inch. But what isn't different is the aspect ratio. Like its younger brother, the notepad has an aspect ratio of 16 by 10, hence the unusual screen resolution. This screen aspect ratio, like what I have said on the Oplus Duo review, is a perfect bridge between having a widescreen display meant for media consumption and a standard paper-sized screen for reading and productivity. Quality-wise, colors are okay, contrast and saturation is average, sharpness is on point, blocks are deep, and the glass that is covering the display doesn't attract too much glares or at least when compared to the reflective screen that the Oplus Duo has. Another bragging right that the Oplus Notepad has is its latest software version. The device runs on Windows 10 out of the box. An overall look on Microsoft's latest offering is a subject for a more comprehensive discussion. But let me just name a few features that are truly essential. For one, we now have an action center that spawns on the right side of the display which houses all of your recent notifications and shortcut buttons. The software now also reconfigures the interface depending on whether it is attached or not to the keyboard. Using the device without the dock activates tablet mode which displays all the tiles right on the home screen itself. Alternatively, when the notepad is docked, all those tiles are hidden in the start menu, cleaning the interface replicating the simple look we had on Windows 7 and earlier versions. Of course, we also have the multi-window feature, Voice Assistant, Cortana, Microsoft Market, and of course, the well-praised Edge browser. But what set this device different from other devices, or at least to some of them, is the IntelliPen or stylus that comes with it. The pen is pretty lightweight, although there's some pretty heft to it when compared to other styluses out there. This is due to the single quadruple A battery that's inside, which can be accessed by rotating the top of it. There's a clip that is present, which not only makes it hard to misplace, but also gave it a more realistic look. There's also two buttons, which acts as an eraser. And the other button, well, it looks like it doesn't do anything at the moment, or at least until a software update arrives. A leaflet from the package shows some applications that can utilize this feature. Apps like Fresh Paint, AutoCAD 360, StuffPad, and Autodesk Sketchbook works well with the device. I have tried native softwares like Paint and OneNote, and they also played well with the accessory. The IntelliPen sure is a good inclusion, but the experience with it is sure not perfect. If I may complain, some softwares doesn't seem play nice with my palm touching the display, thus registers some weird pen signatures. The device also has a quite spacious internal storage of 64GB with around 57 gigs available to use, which is enough already in my opinion to store all apps and software data and some primary files. If you're really planning to use it as a primary computer, a more spacious external storage device can be helpful to store all your movie collection 
and other auxiliary files. The Oplus Notepad brags a 1.4 GHz quad-core Intel Atom processor with Intel HD graphics and 4 GB of RAM. Such tip-top figures are really appetizing, but does it really deliver in real-world scenarios? Here's my test results. Before we start, let us set our expectations right first. This device is meant for the specific type of creatives and for people who need a device that can handle day-to-day -day tasks. And in that regard, this thing really did perform. Apps that utilize the IntelliPen like the Fresh Paint, AutoCAD 360, and the Autodesk Sketchbook, they all ran fluidly. I've also tried playing Asphalt 8 Airborne and side-loaded Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, and the gameplay with those titles are almost comparable to those budget desktop-sized PCs. I also tried stressing the spacious RAM by opening multiple browser tabs at once, with some YouTube videos preloaded. I did also play music in the background via iTunes and did wrote this review on the Microsoft Word. The device did not give up at all. Although it showed some stutters when I tried shifting between different applications, but the experience is still commendable. The notepad is really geared for those people who are always on the go. That is why Oplus opted to also include a 4G connectivity network on this thing. It accepts micro SIM cards which may not support the one you have on your smartphone since a nano-sized SIM is almost a standard to today's devices. However, this is probably fine since you might be opting to use a separate network for your other device anyways, or just simply get an adapter. And just like most of the tablets that are existing today, the notepad also has a crappy set of camera sensors. Both the front and back shooters only has a 2 megapixel sensors with them. The camera feature on this thing is only usable for video calls or if you're really left with no choice but to take photos with it, say you left your phone at home. Needless to say, both of them can capture images with tons of noise and grains, ugly colors, and dead contrast. However, everything still looks bright and details are perceivable, characteristics that are only acceptable on Skype calls. The Oplus Notepad towed in a large 7500 mAh battery, which is probably the main reason behind its hefty weight. Even so, despite the substantial juice inside, my tests yielded standard results. Screen on time lasted the device for about 4 hours and 30 minutes before the juice indicator reached 14%. For other light to casual usage, this thing can surely last you a day. Say you're just doing clerical work or jotting down notes in school, you can get throughout those hours and not worry if you left your charger at home. Now there you have it, the Oplus Notepad in all its glory. But despite all of the optimism that I had with it, I bet there are still a lot of people shaking their heads, which is really inevitable. Some might have found a different device whom they think has a better value for the money and I don't blame them for that since there are actually a lot of it out there. But it actually depends on what you are looking for on a device. I did check other devices under this price range and figured out that the Oplus Notepad is in fact worth a shot if you're in the market for what it offers. Other devices that are within the Notepad's 16995 price range do include a better processor, a larger display, or even better build quality. But almost none of them offers a touchscreen display, a keyboard dock, a stylus, and a 4G connection. Sure, there are great tablets out there that already have these specifications, but those aren't legit laptop tablet hybrids. The Oplus Notepad is a more refined and smarter Oplus convertible and a more geared device for creatives than any other competing devices. Creatives who cannot afford an iPad or a Microsoft Book or Surface and an add-on stylus. Oplus wants you to express your passion right away without the fuss. The Oplus Notepad is a bold move for the company and I commend them for doing such. This has been Epic's full review of the Opus Notepad. For a more detailed look about this device, make sure to check out the full written review link below. You might also hit the thumbs up button and share this video if you liked it. And also subscribe if you still haven't. Thank you for watching.